Ladies and gentlemen, we are here with week five of P4G, Pokemon for Glory. The Order Detroit Steel Wings are taking on J. Ricky and the Gigaton Hammers. I am a little nervous for the matchup, if I'm being completely honest with you. It has been a little bit of a whirlwind this season. I had some very strong wins coming out of the gate. And then, unfortunately, just just put a collar on and got dog walked the last two weeks. It, is, it has not been a good showing. And I apologize to you, the fans of the Detroit Steel Wings. It is certainly not the showing that I like to have. So... Definitely have been meditating under some waterfalls. Looking forward to a good matchup this week with Jay Ricky. He was in the uh, Pokemon Premier League with me last season. We did not get the chance to play, so I'm looking very much forward to this matchup. He is on a tear, which certainly doesn't add to my nerves by any stretch of the imagination, but I am looking forward to this. If you guys are new, leave a like, subscribe for more. Uh, similar to last week, we're actually going to kick this week's video off with a few free agency transactions and some updates to the roster prior to heading into the team builder. Um, same vein as kind of what happened last week. You know, some Pokemon didn't put on for a good show. There were some opportunities through free agency that opened up that really I felt kind of benefited our team a little bit. So unfortunate to say, uh, Alistair, the Rotom Heat is retiring for the remainder of the season. Uh, we do wish him well in his future endeavors. And we have recruited Stolas, the Talonflame. Yes, I do also watch Hell of a Boss for those of you at home. Uh, Talonflame's great. I don't think I can say enough good things about Talonflame. I have always had to prep my fanny off for Talonflame here. Um, frankly, from a, from a, like it, like it's okay, well rounded in every step besides speed. Like it's got some okay bulk for a low tier league. 78 HP, 81 attack, 71 defense, 74 special attack, 69 special defense, 126 speed. This opened up in free agency and we were able to pick it up just tit for tat right in that tier. We are losing an electric type as a result of that, but. I definitely think Talonflame will bring a lot to the table. It has some two two really good abilities, in my opinion. For a defensive set, it does have the access to Flame Body, 30% chance for contact moves to be punished by a burn. And then Gale Wings, while it did receive a nerf uh, going into Generation 7 or 8, one of those two, uh, Gale Wings, if this Pokemon's HP is at full, Flying-type moves have priority increased by one. So priority Brave Birds are going to be great. Priority Acrobatics, priority Defogs, priority Tailwinds. All those things can be really nice, especially because heavy duty boots are out. So we're not just going to be punished by taking 50% from rocks on the switch in. We'll be able to come in at full, get a priority defog off, do something along those lines. Um, it can be run uh, both physical or special. I have seen people run flamethrower and hurricane on there, overheat with eject pack. Um, you do get access to both bulk up and sword dance for setup as well. It can be a very fast taunt user. Pivoting in U-turn, I think it does a lot of what Rotom Heat provided for us. Just a little bit faster, a little bit less bulk, but we do have um, just a little bit more versatility in that, I feel like. So feel free to let me know what your guys' thoughts in the comment section down below. The only other free agency transaction that we made this week was not with a Pokemon, but with a Terra typing. Uh, Terra Captain type changes do dip into the free agency roster, and I won't put up a whole slide for this to go over this, but uh, the change that we made was moving uh, Servine from Grass, Stellar, and Fairy to Grass, Stellar, and Fire. Um, Terror Fire just found my I found myself being just kind of a little bit on the back foot when it came to uh, Pokemon that were, you know, fire types, just being able to not set up in front of them. So being able to just kind of confidently come in, go for it, you know, terrestrialize into a fire type, shed that weakness and start boosting with Leaf Storm right out of the gate into now assumingly a ground rock or water type to attack me super effectively. Chef's kiss, chef's kiss. So those are going to be the transactions. Feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Uh, talking about J. Ricky's team, man, it is gonna, it, it is a doozy. Uh, there will be some text floating somewhere on screen in post-production if you guys would like to go on ahead and check that out. Always recommend you guys watch the team builder so you guys know what I'm bringing and why I'm bringing it. So that way, halfway through the battle, you're not like, well, why didn't he? Well, because I probably talked about it. So uh, all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are going to start to see some teams appear on screen right about now. My opponent has a team that consists of Hisuian, Gudra, Tornadus Incarnate, Crawdont, Mesprit, Pomot. Vaporeon, Bramblegast, Gligar, Typhlosion, Carbink, and Muck. Uh, some things to note about my opponent's team. Hisui and Gudra and Tornadus Incarnate have come to every match my opponent has played thus far, so I'm assuming they'll show up. Uh, Terra Captains are Carbink, that can be Terra Fairy, Terra Water, or Terra Fighting, and Muck, Terra Poison, Terra Ground, or Terra Grass. Um, looking at my opponent's team, there is definitely a more balanced feel to it in my mind, um, so I want to kind of play a little bit more thoughtfully, but also lean into a little bit more aggression this week. I feel like I found myself on the back foot too early the last two weeks and just kind of went downhill from there. So my idea is to just kind of lead and just start putting on as much pressure as I can. And what better way to do that than with Husker the Ursaring? He is rocking his Eevee Light with the Guts ability. We have Swords Dance, Trailblaze, Ice Punch, and Earthquake, 204 EVs in attack, 
60 EVs in special defense, 244 in speed with a jolly nature. With this spread at plus one, we are outspeeding Palmot and below. We will not outspeed the Tornadus Incarnate, but Palmot and everything else will be good to go. Uh, Swords Dance is a great way to boost our attack. 130 base attack and just toss off some big hits. Trailblaze to boost our speed. Ice Punch is great. Being able to hit Hisui and Gudra neutrally, being able to hit Tornadus super effectively. Uh, Bramble Gas, Gligar, uh, things along those lines super effectively. Terror Grass, Muck if it does show up. Uh, Earthquake is great. We're able to pop things like Gudra. We're able to pop things like Palmot. Uh, Typhlosion, Carbink, things along those lines. So very, very excited to see, see this set. We are so we also are able to punish, you know, things like Scald from Vaporeon, Toxic from Gligar. Uh, if it does come around and happen to that, uh, normal typing is going to prevent Baron Bogaz from going for any sort of like Poltergeist shenanigans because that thing is a threat. Um, so we want to make sure that we're staying as healthy as possible to take that thing on and just punch it in the face with our icy bear claws. Next up, we are bringing Adam the Empoleon. He is rocking a weakness policy with the Torrent ability. Agility, Surf, Ice Beam, and Grass Knot, 248 EVs in HP, 12 in Special Attack, 164 in Special Defense, 84 in Speed with a Modest Nature. The idea behind this is to lean into our weakness policy, and I know it didn't work out the way that I wanted it to uh, on a prior time, but I'm hopeful we'll be able to make it happen this time. There's a lot of super effective coverage on Jay Riggy's team that... I'm really hoping we can pull off. Um, after an agility, we are at speeding his entire team. At plus two, Surf, Ice Beam, and Grass Knot is just doing a, a ton of damage across the board. Uh, Ice Beam is able to hit the Hisuian Gudra neutrally. Ice Beam is able to hit the Tornadus. Uh, Sur I mean, Crawdont really is not that bulky, but Grass Knot will be able to take out the Crawdont. Surf is doing good damage to Mesprit, to Palmot. Grass Knot for the Vaporeon. Ice Beam for Bramble Guest and Gligar. Surf for Typhlosion. Surf for Carbink, unless it is Terra Water, then we'll run Grass Knot. Surf for Muck, unless it is Terra Grass, and then we'll go for Ice Beam. So really, really solid set this week. Really hoping it comes through for us the way that we wanted to. Next up, we are bringing Vaggy the Deancey. She is rocking her leftovers with the clear body ability. We have Stealth Rock, Diamond Storm, Body Press, and Spikes. 248 EVs in HP, 8 in defense, 252 in special defense with a careful nature. Hazards go a long way in this game. The only form of hazard removal is the rapid spin on Bramblegast. I don't know if it will show up. It may, it may not. So being able to get some rocks and some spikes up just to start wearing down some thick mons like Vaporeon and like Gujo will be really nice. Diamond Storm is a great way to boost our physical defense to allow Body Press to do a lot more damage. It is threatening a lot of Pokemon that if you don't resist rock, it is going to hurt. And then, of course, Body Press just doing a ton of damage to a ton of Pokemon in general. Next up, I'm really excited for this set. I hope you guys are too. We are bringing Sarah the Verizion. She was obtained in free agency last week. So if you guys aren't familiar with that, you want to check that out, feel free to. She is rocking her life over the justified ability. We have Calm Mind, Giga Drain, Air Slash, and Close Combat. 24 EVs in HP, 96 in attack, 156 in special attack, 232 in speed with a naive nature. I went naive nature. Let's talk about this one because it's a little bit more complex. 24 EVs in HP put us at 329 HP. So Life Orb is only doing 32 points of HP damage as opposed to 33. 96 EVs in attack with the Life Orb we should be able to knock out a max HP Hisui and Gudra with some hazard damage. If not, it's a very, very roll. It's a roll not in my favor, but it is still a roll to knock out a max HP Hisui and Gudra from full. Uh, 156, uh, I guess 232 uh, EVs in speed with a naive nature. We are then outspeeding Palmot and below. We cannot ever outspeed Tornadus Incarnates or everything else we are outspeeding. And the rest of that was pumped into special attack. I went with a naive nature, giving us a negative special defense over a negative defense nature because I would like this thing to hopefully, hopefully switch in on Crawdont once uh, and then hopefully go for a Giga Drain and just kind of maybe scare it out and go for there. Um, it Calm Minds will boost our special defense so that way the negative defense nature will not impact us too greatly. Next up, we are bringing Terra Captain for the week. Egg Boys, the Doug Trio. They are holding their soft sand with the Sand Force ability, Earthquake, Stone Edge, Shadow Claw, and Swords Dance. 252 EVs in attack, 64 in defense, 192 in speed with a jolly nature. With this spread, we are outspeeding um, the entirety, I believe. Let me double check this here. The entirety of J Riggy's team, which is always a good thing to have. We're running the Sand Force ability. If you guys are just tuning in and didn't hear me talk about it in the last last week last week's free agency video um the arena trap ability is banned so we are only able to use the uh sand force or the sand veil ability and i believe sand veil is also banned so it's just sand force we don't have sandstorm so it, it it is what it is at the end of the day but there is very very little once we can start to kind of get away from these um ground immunities that he has so gligar mesprit and tornadus if we can get those out of there uh just tossing off just some 
big old earthquakes is gonna hurt. Stone Edge is gonna be nice to be able to pick off things like Tornadus. Uh, Shadow Claw is good damage on the Bramble Gas we and Mesprit. We really do gotta work on that Gligar just a little bit, but outside of there, we are putting in a tremendous amount of work this week with the, with the Egg Boys. And last, but certainly not least, we are bringing to the table, where are my notes here? Sorry. <laughs> We are bringing Dazzle the Gastrodon back. They are rocking a Rindo Berry with the Storm Drain ability. We have Counter, Recover, Earth Power, and Ice Beam. 248 EVs in HP, 252 in defense, eight in special attack with a bold nature. Rindo Berry is gonna help us with any cheeky grass type coverage that my opponent wants to go for. Something like Grass Knot on Tornadoes, Seed Bomb on Palmot, um, Grass Move on Gudra maybe, uh, Terra Blast, Grass from Muck, something along those lines. Uh, Bramble Gas being able to go for just a power up. We'll be able to take one of those. Um, unfortunately, counter doesn't work on Bramble Guest, but it does work on counter Palma. It does work on Seed Bomb Palma. It does work on something like a knockoff Crawdont as well. Just being able to help us out there. Storm Drain gives us immunity to Vaporeon, Scald, Surf, Hydro Pump, things along those lines, as well as like a Crab Hammer from Crawdont too. That'll be good for us as well, being able to boost our special attack. And then Earth Power and Ice Beam is just really good dual stab to have. Ice Beam for Tornadus, Earth Power for Palma, Earth Power for Typhlosion, Ice Beam for Bramble Guest, Ice Beam for Gligar. Ice Beam for Mesprit, Earth Power for Vaporeon, Earth Power for Usu and Gudra, Earth Power for Crawdon, Earth Power for Carbink, Earth Power for Muck. I think it's a really well-rounded team. We've got some good bulk here. We've got some good potential to set up. We've got some speed as well. Let me know what you guys think of the team in the comment section down below. I'll cut to team preview and I'll see you guys there. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here with week five of P4G. The Detroit Sewings are taking on Jay Ricky and the Gigaton Hammers. Really looking forward to this matchup. If you guys missed the team builder, well, you guys can see the six that I'm bringing on screen. I will cut to team preview and I'll see you guys there. All right, so we see a pretty, mm, pretty fair amount of what I had expected here. So we see the Muck, we see Tornadus, we see Crawdont, Gudra, Gligar, and Mesprit. Okay, so Terra Muck might be a little bit troublesome to kind of uh, work around here. No Palmot is always uh, fun for me. No Vaporeon. Um, no Bramble Gas, no Typhlosion, and no Carbink. Okay, so as far as leads go, um, I feel like Mesprit is a pretty fine lead for, um, Mesprit is a pretty fine lead if it's like a standard, like, hazard setter. Um, I'm trying to think, I think Verizion could be pretty fine to start off with. I think Verizion could be a fine way to start things off and kind of go from there. Um, other than that, we'll just kind of see how it goes. I'm trying to think what would the... So Mux Terra types are Poison, Ground, and Grass. Maybe it is Terra Grass just to kind of um, deal with Doug Trio and Verizion a little bit better. Um, but that just means that Ursaring and Empoleon and Gastrodon are all going to have a little bit of super effective coverage on there. Um We'll be able to air slash it with Verizion as well if it is a Terra Grass. So, um, no Bramble Gas does make me feel a little bit better. I felt like that thing was just a uh, uh, poltergeist, as we've seen in some previous league matches that I've done, um, can go can go very very badly, very very swiftly. So, um, hopefully, we have the six to uh, to take on my man here. I'm really looking forward to this matchup. Uh, very scary team, but I think we've also got a pretty scary team. So, leads off with Pixie, which is going to be the Mesprit. Perfect. We lead off with the Verizion here. Um, now, I certainly don't mind just going for a Calm Mind. We're faster than this thing. Uh, and Giga Drain at plus one will be a two-hit KO to... Oh, excuse me, let me double-check for max HP. Yeah, max HP, it'll be a three-hit KO. So depending on the set here, uh, we may or may not have um, a problem on our hands. We'll see. We'll see. Those were nasty plot. Okay. Mm, so maybe not super offensive here. Um, I am just going to go for a... Hmm. Looks like max rolls on both Giga Drain and Air Slash would be doing good damage. Um, I think Giga Drain gets me a little bit more out of it. Air Slash does have the 30% chance to flinch. I could also go for another Calm Mind. to mitigate the nasty plot that he's got up right now.
And then the more damage that we get on this, the more that, you know, Doug Tree will be able to come in and revenge kill with something like Shadow Claw. There's the nasty plot again. Oh, God. So, Giga Drain again, 72 to 85 here. Air Slash has a 30% chance to flinch if I go for that. Um, I'm curious to see some Doug Trio. I just want to double check Doug Trio against this as a revenge killer here. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, Shadow Call would do 41 to 48. So if I go for a plus two air slash. Hmm. Let's just go for the Giga Drain. Let's get big damage here. That way Shadow Claw is able to do a bit that actually looks pretty invested. Sword power. Okay. That'll take me out here. Um, Mesprit KOs. Rizion with sword power. I assume that would have. Um... Plus four. Let me just double check that. Yeah, stored power against Verizion even at plus two is blowing me backwards. Okay. Um, so Doug Trio can come in and hit a pretty big Shadow Claw as well. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's gonna be our best play. Doing about 34 to 40. We're sitting at we're sitting about in that range. I'll go for a Shadow Claw here. Sitting right around there. We're sitting like 40-ish. So um if he's not max HP. Uh then we're looking good. But if he has like max HP with any defensive investment, we saw that the Giga Drain didn't do as much. So maybe there's a little bit more special defensive investment there. Withdraws. Okay. So we scared it out, which is always a good thing. In comes Nightcrawler. Who's that? The Gligar? Yeah, in comes Nightcrawler, the Gligar. Okay. That did abysmal damage. That did... So that's probably what? Eviolite? Mm. Yeah, that's looking pretty max HP. Round max defense there. Okay. Let me leave some notes here. Um... Max HP, lot of defense. You have your Eviolite. Okay. Um, I don't really do too much of this, but I also don't switch in too well to this thing. I'm also not too afraid of going into Gastrodon here. I actually want to keep Gastrodon healthy for Crawdon now that... I want to keep Gastrodon healthy for Crawdon now that Brizion is gone. Let's swap into Yancy here. goes for toxic okay i was kind of thinking that might be a play um no hazard support over there this could have be a fast taunter um could go for a fast taunt here this thing does get taunt right pretty sure pretty sure yeah glygar could get taunt here so um hmm I'll just go for a Diamond Storm here. Expecting a taunt. Get a little bit of chip damage. We'll try to switch in and out and around. The executive who wants to bring. I'm like super hyper focused, especially after the last two weeks of battles. I want to make sure like... I am giving the right play, and that leaves, like, my colorful commentary just a little bit left to the wayside there. So, uh, just goes for U-turn. Okay, does not go for a taunt, so we're going to get a big Diamond Storm off on something. That was a crit U-turn. Don't know how much a crit U-turn matters at this at this stage of the game, but um, something is taking a Diamond Storm that does not want to take a Diamond Storm. I don't see too much in the way that really wants this. Especially if I get up to plus one after this with... Uh, 
uh, with body press, we're doing a good amount of damage. In comes Nimrod. That's much Two and Gudra. Okay. Not too much damage there. We're going to get our leftovers back. Um, steel move. Steel move will hurt. He's got it. So I kind of want to make the play into Gastrodon here. Just to keep our Deancey as healthy as possible. And I think we'll just kind of scout what this thing wants to go for. <clears throat> I don't really know if I need the Rindo Berry here. Um, maybe for like Grass Knot on Tornadus, but or Energy Ball from Mesprit. Um, just trying to think and, and talk through where my head's at and making some of these plays. So, suing Gudra if it's set up, maybe could be a little bit problematic. Um, we'd have to go like really hard Terra Ground, Dug Trio, and just start like trying to bop with Earthquake at that point. But I imagine we'll see here just Heavy Slam, yeah. Heavy Slam comes off. Okay. Um,. Is there anything that's really threatening me right now if I just go for an Earth Power? I guess I could go for Ice Beam maybe on the Gligar switch. I feel like that could be fair. Um, you know, we'll see exactly what Gudra wants to do here. The draws. Okay. Goes out into a Tuma. Ooh. That is the Crawdon. Oh, boy. Um, well, so this is my, like, big check for this thing right here. 350. I'm at 82. Knockoff has a chance to kill me here. Maybe going for, I don't want him to set up. So I think maybe going for an earth power. There's a knockoff. I could have went for counter. Could have went for counter. That would have been great. It is what it is. Um, that could have been a low roll on a choice bandit set. Um, anything that really wants to get knocked off here? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. I'll just go for a random ice beam. But I think Crawdon's going to knock me out here. I'm pretty, I, I want to go on the record and say that that's banded. Crawdon, KOs, Gastrodon with knockoff. Okay. Um, if banded, if banded, um, Ursaring outspeeds. Um, if banded Ursaring outspeeds, I could go for a Trailblaze here. Um, I think that's fine. I mean, Violite should be faster unless he's max speed Jolly, right? He's max speed jolly, then a little bit problematic, but I want to assume like adaptability banded based off of that damage. If he's absolute max speed jolly, he outspeeds me. If not, aha! All right, so he stayed in. He didn't want me to go for any sort of a, did not want me to go for any sort of a um, swords dance there. I respect the play. Uh, we are gonna be faster than everything now. Uh, barring Tornadus. It's all going to depend on what comes down here. Big Wall Breaker and Crawdon being gone is always a good thing. We still got some pieces to play with. We still have some pieces to play with. That was a lot of priority that Doug Trio would have had to have danced around. That was a big threat for Deancey. That I mean, it was just a hard hitter in general. So I think we made the right call there. Knockoff would have just hurt.
yeah, knockoff actually had a chance to kill her ring. So, um, just being a, you just 120 base attack adaptability with a choice band. I mean, I know we've got 130 attack here, but my goodness, that that thing is just a monster. Um, so Gligar has toxic, so it really has to be careful about that. Here comes Leech. Um, here comes Leech. I'm. I actually don't know like what all you want to do here. I'm going to Swords Dance here. Maybe like a Drain Punch comes off. Knock off. Knocks off my Aviolite. Okay. Um, plus two Earthquake should be doing a lot here. I almost want to predict that and go for an Ice Punch on Terra Grass. Plus two Ice Punch. Terra Grass. That'd be some really good damage. I'll try it. I'm gonna make that read. I did not make that read. That did half though. Oh, that's huge. Thought out immediately. Okay, never mind. Not huge anymore. Here comes the drain punch. It's most of that back. Okay. Poison touch activates my guts as well. That's a little bit unfortunate. That's a little bit unfortunate because I think Ice Punch now should knock it out from here. Mm, no, I'm going to go for an Earthquake. All right. Pursuing KO's muck. With EQ. Take a little bit of poison damage there. Puts me down to 16. Okay. Um, is there benefit in keeping you alive right now? Is kind of my question. Because Tornadus is going to come in here and outspeed me. Assuming it's max speed torn. Um, I think I stay in and just go for an ice punch, quite honestly. Try to get as much damage as I can off. Ice punch is neutral across the board here. Um, if it's not a max speed tornadoes, yeah, I think this is the one. Yeah, here it is. Here it is. Okay, so if it's not max speed torn, I just go for the ice punch here and hope. We'll at least get some insight into what this thing has. Has sludge wave. Okay. Okay. Tornadoes. KO's cursor ring with budget. Okay. Um I think I go into DNC here. Maybe threaten the Maybe threaten the Um Threaten the Diamond Storm. Maybe try to get a Body Press off here. Because Grass Knot's only doing... Grass Knot's doing very minimal damage to me. Um, I'll go for a Body Press trying to catch Gudra on the Switch, maybe. I mean, I've still got a huge defense stat at the end of the day, so it'll be some good chip for this. But, um, yeah, Diamond Storm is going to be doing just a little bit too much damage, I feel. Here comes Nimrod. That's going to be the Gudra. We'll be able to catch that, which is nice. Good damage. Good damage. Um. This really threatens that I'm the... So I know I'm not faster than this, right? I tie like Carbink and Muck, so this thing will naturally outspeed me. Yeah. Um, I think the player is to go to an Empoleon. Try to just chip this thing down.
Yeah, Heavy Slam would always kill Doug Trey on the Switch. So we're going to swap into Empoleon here. Goes for the Heavy Slam. Okay. That'll be fine for us. Um, I think the play here is to just Ice Beam, Ice Beam, Ice Beam until we can't anymore. Yep, it's Salt Vest. Here goes the Earthquake. Ice Beam doing 21 to 25 now. I'll go for that. Oh, so close. There's the Earthquake again. All right, Guja's going to knock me out here. Guja KOs Empoleon with you. Um, I don't know if I have a way of breaking through the Gligar now. That's kind of my only issue here is not being able to break through Gligar. Um, it's at like 10%, so a Stone Edge actually would knock this thing out from here from this range. Uh, Shadow Claw also would be doing a good amount of damage to this thing. I'm going to go for... Mm, let's go for Shadow Claw on this thing. Goes on to Pixie, which is gonna be the Mesprit. Okay, so we're gonna sack the we're gonna sack the Mesprit here. All right, the trio KOs. Mesprit with Shadow Claw. Yeah, I think unfortunately, just because uh, Gligar's got the the Toxic there, I don't know if I have a good way to um, really punish that thing. I mean, a plus two Shadow Claw is doing thirty six to forty. Or excuse me, let me pull up Gligar here. Um, yeah, plus two Stone Edge and Shadow Claw are really not doing too much to this thing here. Um, I can try to go for it. Get some big crits. But I believe Gligar is just going to wrap this up here. Yep, Earthquake. Well, that's a good amount of damage. Big Stone Edge crit. Nope, that is going to be game. Gligar is going to take me out. Like our KO's Doug Trio with EQ, um, and then it, yeah, I, I would need like some penultimate super crit and be faster than you in some world when you have 85 base speed, but um, I don't think that's going to be the case. I will say, I feel like whatever funk I was in uh, has been played a little bit better this time around because I did not get absolutely, I feel like I did not get dog walked. Um, the comment section may feel otherwise, but I definitely feel like that did not happen this time around, which is... Uh, always a good thing in my mind. Um, just being able to, uh, you know, play a little bit better. Hopefully, whatever slump I, I, I was in subconsciously or otherwise has been uh, has been removed. But I am very happy to see that. Hopefully, I gave Jay Ricky a better showing. Um, you know, exchange our exchange our GGs after the match and things along those lines. But uh, there was a crit. I don't know how much that mattered in the end game there, unless you know Diamond Storm is not doing too much. But um, hopefully, uh, hopefully Jerry Ricky had a good game. Hopefully you guys enjoyed as well. I'm feeling much better about this game, even though we are walking away, uh, from a, what is that? A 3-0, a 4-0, uh, some sort of a loss. We did not get absolutely 5-0'd, 6-0'd. So that always makes me feel a little bit better at the end of the day. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. I want to remind you guys to be great and do great. And I'll see you on the next video. Later.